Star Wars. Can Russia take down SpaceX Starlink? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for tea time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. So good guys, so good. You see that's a different mug. Some of you guys have been asking me about this mug. I had this one yesterday, remember? Black, black inside, kind of cool. Look at the size difference. You guys have been asking me for it, so if you want to pick one of these up, you can go to jchristina.com forward slash shop. Some of my merch, there's a whole bunch of stuff over there. Anyways, I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a, I guess it'd be a tech day. Um, we're going to be talking about SpaceX Starlink, but... A little side note to that. We're going to be talking about Russia and the conflict going on and how they have progressed and moved forward when it comes to actual the conflict itself not being as much of a ground base and maybe an air base, but more of a space based, a non terrestrial based type of war that's going on. Cyber attacks, all type of jamming devices and other stuff. And I was reading a really interesting article over on EuroAsia Times and they kind of summed this up and I want to go through some of it with you. It's a little bit lengthy, but I think that it's very interesting because it shows where we are today and it seems to be going in this direction. Things are escalating, I guess, ticking up a notch or two, but on the side of, once again, non-terrestrial conflict. So before we get into this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this, even in the least, find it entertaining or maybe even educational or maybe edutainment type of base content, throw the video a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not. And if you are, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And on Friday, we might be going live once again. And hopefully we don't have two streams going on and a whole bunch of mess and audio problems. This is what happens when it comes to lives. It is what it is. Anyways, one other thing I want to say that is if you want to just say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here. You can click on that. That would be fantastic. If not, that's okay. Also, consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. One more thing. If you're looking for outage-free, faster, more reliable, and of course, secure internet connection, check out Speedify. Their software is what I'm currently using for all of my live streams, and it's been really worth working out well. Matter of fact, if you want to see it in operation, check out any of my live streams that I do on Friday. The nice folks over at Speedify gave me a promo code. The promo code is jchristina. If you use jchristina at checkout, you're going to get 20% off. Or if you just want to use a link, go to jchristina.com forward slash speed. And finally, I'm using that little mic once again to see if it gets better than it was the last time. Instead of the RE20, which would be this big radio mic, just throw that out of frame for now, but I'm using the small mic right around here just to test it out. We all know that Electro Voice RE20 is going to be better, but is this good enough? Something really small. Maybe I'll kind of hang it over here if it does work out well or something just to get it off screen so it's not so podcasty, even though this is kind of a video podcast. Anyways, let's get right into this. I think once again, this is fascinating. A space threat assessment by an American think tank has also concluded that there has been an unparalleled level of transparency on the battlefield of Ukraine. Sensitive intelligence was declassified to reveal Moscow's plan and intention, imagery showing the massing of Russian forces and social media posts conveying the war's horrors up close. The Center of Strategic and International Studies, or the CSIS assessment, which took an in-depth look at Russian's counter space activities, noted space capabilities are aiding in this transparency and making an impactful contribution to this fight. Communication satellites empower Ukrainian forces and connect the Ukrainian people with the outside world. Quote, imagery satellites, some able to penetrate clouds and collect pictures at night, are watching the movement of Russian forces, mapping humanitarian evacuation routes, and collecting evidence of war crimes. Other satellites can detect and locate the source of GPS interference, which is causing Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, to alter their course. 
Some observers have described the war as the, quote, first commercial space war due to the prominence of Western space industry capabilities enabling Ukraine resistance. However, as with any advantage on the battlefield, adversaries quickly look for ways to erode that edge, and the same is true for space. As assessment analysis detailed the Russian employment of electronic warfare and cyber attacks against space systems, uncertainty of Russian use of laser weapons, and unusual behavior by Russian inspector satellites in GEO. While the space lessons in the Ukraine are still to be written, there may be insight to gleam on Moscow's space strategy and doctrine and lessons for the United States to apply to threats in the Indo-Pacific. A recent quote from the deputy director of the Russian Russian Foreign Ministry Department of Non-Proliferation and Arms warning that quasi-civilian infrastructure may become a legitimate target for retaliation. These Russian attacks against Ukrainian space assets development shows how counter space weapons would determine future conflicts. Very interesting. The continuing war in the Ukraine has seen Russian using GPS jamming devices throughout. Russian has also denied Ukrainian its command and control systems enabled by commercial communication satellites. On February 24, 2022, Russians conduct a cyber attack to deny connectivity between Viasat Communications, KA satellite network, and its thousands of ground terminals. This cyber attack occurred just hours before Russian troops attacked Ukraine that day. The Ukrainian government and military, both Viasat customers, were the targets of the cyber attack. They entered a virtual private network, or VPN, and deployed wiper malware that crashed terrestrial modems through the satellite downlink. Ukrainian rushed to Elon Musk and SpaceX to help restore connectivity through commercial LEO broadband. Four days later, Starlink terminals reconnected the Ukrainian government and civilians to the internet. Since then, Russian attacks on Starlink ground terminals to disrupt Ukrainians' communications continue. In March 2022, even the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, or the EASA, stated that the issue of Global Navigation Satellite Systems, or GNSS, jamming and or possible spoofing has intensified in geographical areas surrounding the conflict zone. According to sources on the ground, there is no independently verified report of Russia deploying direct energy capabilities against satellites in the military operation in Ukraine. Russian officials have showcased a Zadir weapon said to be more powerful and damaging than its previous variant, a ground-based satellite laser that has stated capabilities to attack satellites in LEO, or low Earth orbit. Neither of these capabilities have been employed in the Ukrainian conflict despite the high volume of remote sensing satellites and other platforms that are providing data and intelligence on Russian troop position and Ukrainian military. The Russian inspector satellite called Lurch, which supports its military operations in the Ukraine through signal intelligence gathering in GEO. In early 2020, Lurch made a significant maneuver westward, covering about 60 degrees in longitude. As it moved, Lurch had the opportunity to conduct multiple close approaches with other satellites. A year later, in March 2021, after Russia began its initial military buildup near the Ukrainian border, Lurch made another significant maneuver back eastward to visit a Russian satellite in GEO. Commercial space domain awareness company Slingshot Aerospace had recorded that Lurch moved to rendezvous with Intel Satellite 39, a high-throughput communication satellite with European coverage, one month before Russia's military operation began in the Ukraine. Since then, Lurch has performed approximate operations near Intel satellites and loitering nearby for over 150 days at each specific satellite. This is a significant departure from Lurch's nominal operation since typical loitering times are much less. Notable, these Intel satellites transmit KU and C-band frequency often used in secure military communication over Ukraine. However, it is unclear if they support any military operations in the region. So we need to bear in mind also that SpaceX Starlink's systems also communicate through KA and KU band. So the question would be, can any of these Intel satellites like Lurch 
pull up next to one of the SpaceX Starlink satellites in the region and now snoop on the communication that is going on through that KU band. Is that possible? Now we know that there's going to be some type of end-to-end -end encryption according to Elon Musk that's going on. But how long can that encryption hold out from being hacked continuously with these spy satellites? I really don't know. Now Elon Musk has been quoted in stating this in the past. It is a difficult environment. Starlink has resisted Russian cyber jamming and hacking attempts so far, but they are ramping up their efforts. And I think that is exactly what is going on here. That being said, if the encryption is compromised, let's just say, could this affect the entire constellation or just that specific satellite? I'm not sure. If they can get into one satellite, does that mean that they can get into all? I really don't know. Now, could this mean that Russia could actually take down the entire Starlink system, the entire constellation? Now, going through and reading all of this and other articles, I think a few things are clear. Number one, current conflict as well as future conflicts are not only waged on the ground and in the air, but non-terrestrial in space. And I think it's going to continue that way. I do believe that the United States and other nations, for that matter, really need to come up with a new breed of cybersecurity warfare individuals. People that not only can work on networks on the ground, but also understand the communication networks up in LEO or in GEO. Right? Because it's a little bit different. Once again, you're using KA band, C band, KU band. So the requirements or the methodology of securing those networks are a little bit different. I do believe there should be a new breed of cybersecurity individuals that are specific to not just ground based, but also non terrestrial based security. I think that is a wise thing to do. And as we approach the time when we go back to the moon and we will see SpaceX Starlink satellites orbiting around the moon and we most likely will see these satellites at Mars orbiting around Mars also transmitting data via satellite lasers right we need to have some type of means of not only encryption but also securing those satellites so that they're not bombarded with certain KA or KU or some type of dazzling effect using high-powered lasers from the ground to interrupt signal and whatnot there needs to be means to be able to mitigate this in my personal opinion anyways what do you think about all of this I think it's fascinating fascinating of what's going on. I am an absolute opponent when it comes to war or any type of conflict. I think it's stupid. I think it's a waste of life and a waste of energy, but that's just my personal opinion. I would much rather see peace, but as conflict has always been the nature of humanity since day one, it's going to continue that way. And we need to be able to take certain measures to be able to mitigate, once again, certain type of threats. And I think this is definitely a threat that going forward, we're going to hear a lot more about cyber attacks in space in comparison to on Earth. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, throw the video a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click this button. Do all of those things. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.